Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of having blue death fainting beetles as pets. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, you know that I really like to do these pro lists and con lists. However, I did combine the pros and cons for these guys for you today, and I will be giving you a list of five pros and cons for blue death fainting beetles. Just a quick disclaimer is I am not an expert. I am just a hobbyist that happens to keep the species. Definitely and always go check other sources for your research if you are planning on getting one of these guys as a pet. And make sure you don't just take my word for it because I am a human and I do make mistakes. Speaking of, if I do make any mistakes in this video about blue death fainting beetles, please let me know in the comments down below so that I can correct that. And let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, so let's start off with the pros and then we will end it with the cons of these beetles. So the number one pro of a blue death fainting beetle is they are very low maintenance and very cheap to take care of. So they're very easy to take care of. They don't need any humidity. They need a drier environment. They, are, they do okay at room temp, better at higher temps, but it's not required for you to have any heating unless you have a cold house. And their food is pretty inexpensive and easy to come by as well. But yeah, they are probably one of my easiest pets to take care of for sure. So my second pro is that they are pretty easy to handle. And while you shouldn't handle them too much, they would even be suitable for a child who's not super hands-on, super touchy, but they do okay with the occasional handling. Number three is that blue death fitting beetles are pretty active during the days that most people are pretty active. They are crepuscular, which means that they are more active at dawn and dusk, and they are so fun to watch. They just get into all kinds of stuff. They really like to explore, and it's really fun to watch them. When you give them their food, you usually want to scatter it since they're scavengers, and that just kind of means you can watch them go and find their food. They're very interesting, they're very silly, and they're a little dumb. And who doesn't like having a dumb little pet? And my fourth pro is that they are communal species. So you can house them with other types of desert beetles as well as red velvet ants. If you want to check any of those things out, you should go check out Bugs in Cyberspace. That's actually where I got these guys, and they have more information on that. All right, and my fifth and my last pro is that they live for a very long time. So if you are a keeper of invertebrates or you've even just looked into it, you've probably noticed that a decent amount of pet inverts don't live very long. A lot of invertebrates don't live too long and it sucks. That is always my biggest pro. I prefer animals that live a long time. These guys, however, are recorded to live up to eight years in the wild, and that's insane for bugs. And of course, in captivity, they do tend to live longer since they don't have the risk of predators and they get food handed to them. They don't really have to work for anything. So they do live typically longer in captivity. Alrighty, and now what I think is actually more important, let's move on to the con list of keeping blue death finning beetles. I would say that my first con is that they aren't super handleable. They are relatively okay being handled sometimes, like I said before. However, you can rub off that substance on them and that's not great for them. It also does probably stress them out a little bit. And also they're insects. Even though they are hardy insects and they are relatively hard insects, I mean, they still have little legs and they're tiny. So they're, they're pretty easy to hurt. I see them as more of a display animal that can be handled occasionally. Does that make sense? My next three kind of go together, so don't come for me, okay? They, they're they very similar, but I had their own separate points and I felt like that was important to give them their own spaces, if that makes any sense. So my second con is that they do have limited availability. They can be a little bit pricey up front. I paid a decent amount for mine and they're usually collected seasonally, which means they have a lot of rules around buying them. So my next con is that they are not widely bred in captivity. They're not widely bred, and we're not sure they're ever going to be because they do have a semi-complicated, at least for bugs, um, incubation stage, which normally you don't really have to worry too much about. But yeah, you they need very specific uh, larval conditions to become beetles. So not a lot of people are breeding them. I know of a couple. My third one that goes with that is that they are typically wild caught. Most of the blue death finning beetles you're going to see are wild caught. The reason that can be a problem is for one, you don't want to over collect and there are a lot of laws around that. Since they're seasonally collected, that means that if you're like me and you buy them at a certain point of the year, you can only get a certain amount. Like I could only max out at three beetles and they're pretty expensive that time of year. 
So that's important to keep in mind. Now the problem with having wild caught animals besides just the fact that we don't want to over collect, there are laws in place with that of course, so it's relatively regulated, um, but we still don't want to stay in that realm and keep them wild caught. But the other issues that you would have as a buyer is possible age problems. You don't know how old the beetles you're getting are going to be. And while they live a long time, you could potentially get one that's towards the end of its lifetime. They could also have cosmetic issues like missing legs, things like that. Um, for me, that's not a problem, but for some people aesthetically, that is a problem. So that is also important to note. And for my fifth point, there's no fifth point. I couldn't think of anything else. I'm not going to lie. I sat here and I could, I tried thinking of cons for the beetles and I can't come up with any more. They are really good pets. If you like pet invertebrates, um, these guys are pretty awesome as far as pet invertebrates go. They're pretty unique in the hobby. Um, they have a lot of potential in the hobby, I feel. And they're just really cool. They're just really interesting to watch. So that's all I got for you. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and that it wasn't too disappointing that I couldn't come up with that fifth con. I just, they're just really good pets. I don't know what else to say. Don't forget to give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below if you have any blue death fitting beetles or if you are planning to get some, I would love to know. I will link uh, bugs in cyberspace in the description below, by the way, that is where I got my beetles. And if you're looking for them, I do highly, highly recommend going and supporting uh, his shop. All of my links, including my main Instagram account, my art Instagram account, and my Facebook group will be in the description below. If you want to go check those out, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time, so hit the bell if you don't remember that. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.